Uh, I said today was a busy day in the courts. Today, the same federal judge who's hearing the Paul Manafort case in D.C. in a couple weeks. Today, her courtroom, same courtroom, same judge, uh, was where we learned that there is a whole new defendant in the Russia scandal who we didn't know was coming. Um, I think the big bottom line here with this new defendant who appeared in court today is that the special counsel's office has flipped another cooperating witness in the Russia investigation. Um, but there's other potential threads here to pull. I mean, Robert Mueller and his prosecutors definitely, we now know, they have obtained another guilty plea to another federal felony charge. Uh, this one comes uh, with a, uh, this one comes ex uh, explicitly with a written, robust cooperation agreement for this defendant. Because of who this defendant is, though, there, I, I think there are a bunch of intriguing questions as to how he fits into the larger case. I mean, it's interesting. A bunch of different news outlets, including The Washington Post and CNN, have done the hard work, and the very useful work, actually, of trying to maintain online an ongoing, updated list of all the people who we know have talked to Robert Mueller and his prosecutors, all the people who we know are, are somehow involved in the special counsel's investigation. Before today, this guy who just pled guilty in, in federal court, he was not on any, any of these lists. Nobody knew that he was coming as the next defendant. Uh, but his name is Sam Patton. He's 47 years old. He's a Republican activist and political consultant. He was arraigned and pled guilty in federal court in Washington, D.C. today, before that same judge who's hearing the Paul Manafort trial next month. Uh, the hearing happened at 11 a.m. Eastern. It took less than an hour. And it, it was a very formal hearing. Uh, the prosecutors were asked by the judge in open court to explain the felony to which uh, Sam Patton was going to plead guilty. And the prosecutors did explain that at some length, but they did it kind of in legalese. They didn't bother to spell it all out in plain English. They basically just read the formal written criminal information document that they had filed with the court. It's a very formal proceeding. But, but still, the defendant was present himself because he had to enter his own guilty plea. And so in court today, we did get to see him go through the serious nuts and bolts with the judge, with him confirming to the judge that he understood that he was pleading guilty, that he understood the implications of that. He understood that this was a serious thing to which he was pleading guilty. We also got to see him, crucially, uh, confirm in open court that basically all of this happened to him today um, because he has agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. So uh, here's from the court transcript today, the judge. All right, Mr. Patton, is what the prosecutors just told me a true and accurate description of what you did in this case? The defendant, Sam Patton, it is your honor, the judge. And so did you in fact act as an agent of a foreign principal without registering with the attorney general? The defendant, I did your honor, the judge. And now there is a written statement of the offense, which I take it you and your lawyer have gone over carefully, the defendant. Yes, Your Honor. The judge, are you the one who, again, signed it on the last page where it says defendant's acceptance, indicating that it was true? The defendant, yes, Your Honor. The judge, do you understand that if I accept your guilty plea in this case, you could receive a maximum sentence of up to five years incarceration for that offense? The defendant, I do, Your Honor. The judge, now, do you also understand that in this case, as part of your plea agreement, there is a paragraph that requires you to cooperate fully and truthfully in this case? The defendant, Sam Patton, yes, Your Honor. The judge, and do you also understand that the government has agreed to bring the nature and extent of your cooperation to my attention at the time of your sentencing? The defendant, that is my understanding, Your Honor. And then here's sort of the moment that everybody's waiting for in the courtroom. The judge says, quote, are you entering this plea of guilty voluntarily and of your own free will because you are guilty and for no other reason? The defendant, I am your honor. The judge, is there anything you don't understand about this proceeding or about your plea in this case? The defendant, no, your honor. The judge, is there anything you want to ask me or ask your lawyer before I ask you for your final decision in this case? The defendant, no, your honor. The judge, are you ready now to make a decision about whether you want to enter a plea of guilty or whether you want to have a trial? The defendant, yes, your honor. The judge, and what's your decision? The defendant, I would... I plead guilty to the charge. And the judge says, 
I am satisfied that this defendant is fully competent and capable of making a decision today, that he understands the nature and consequences of what he is doing. The transcript won't reflect it, the judge says, but he has actually nodded his head with every yes, with every question I have asked him today. I find that he is acting voluntarily and of his own free will, and that there is an adequate factual basis for the plea, and therefore, I will accept the plea. And so, Sam Patton today becomes the latest cooperating witness and the latest guilty plea in the special counsel's investigation. Now, Mr. Patton has not yet been sentenced. He will not be sentenced until probably quite a few months from now down the road when uh, the judge who accepted his plea today will consider information that she gets from prosecutors about how well Sam Patton has actually performed as a cooperator with them. She will take that into account when she decides whether or not he is going to prison and if so, for how long. In the meantime, though, before he is sentenced, Sam Patton today was ordered to hand over his passport. He will have to seek permission from the court if he wants to travel anywhere outside the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area. But other than that, he was allowed to go home on his own recognizance. The next time he's due back in court is Halloween, 60 days from now. Uh, but again, he, he eventually will be sentenced by that same judge who took his plea today. Now, I mentioned that Sam Patton is the latest cooperating witness and the latest guilty plea in the special counsel's investigation. I should note that this appears to be another one of those cases that started with the special counsel's office, but they appear to have handed it off. The prosecutors who actually appeared in court today for this hearing for Sam Patton um, were prosecutors from the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C. and also from Maine Justice, from the National Security Division at Maine Justice. Um, reporters say that at least one lawyer and multiple FBI agents associated with the special counsel's office were physically there in court today to see Sam Patton get arraigned, to see him plead guilty. But those FBI agents and lawyers from the special counsel's office, although they were there, they didn't speak in court uh, and they definitely didn't answer any reporter's questions. So this originated in the special counsel's office and then it was handed off to those other entities to actually prosecute him. So. How does this latest guilty plea and this latest cooperation agreement from this guy fit into the larger picture? I'm so glad you asked. Um, I have a lot of things to say about that. Um, I will start small. I don't mean to be catty, but first of all, I will just note that the president's outside counsel on the Russia investigation really is supposedly Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City. It's amazing. I mean, we call the White House uh, for comment and confirmation on all sorts of stories all the time. When it's about the Russia investigation, they refer us to outside counsel. And what they literally mean is that we should call Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> as if we can get real information from Rudy Giuliani. Thank you, we'll call back later. Um, but it should, uh, he is supposedly the outside counsel on the Russia investigation. And it should be noted that Mr. Giuliani, as such, is on the record saying the entire special counsel investigation will be wrapped up, done and dusted, definitely by tomorrow. Well, Your Honor, uh, since the special counsel's office just today arraigned and accepted a guilty plea and a formal cooperation agreement from a brand new defendant, I think it's fair to say that Mr. Giuliani may have been a little bit off in that prediction about this thing ending by dawn. So again, I don't mean to seem catty about that, but it's amazing that that's who the outside counsel is for the president on a matter this serious. And given that his latest on the record pronouncement about the special counsel's investigation is that it's ending tomorrow, it sort of tells you what kind of position the president is in in terms of his representation. So there's that. More substantively, um, it's clear that this latest guilty plea, this latest cooperating witness, has very strong links to the president's campaign chairman and, and to the ongoing legal travails of Paul Manafort. The actual charge to which Sam Patton pled guilty today was that he was operating as an unregistered foreign agent. Um, to be more specific than that, prosecutors today charged him with being an unregistered foreign agent, um, lobbying for and representing the interests of um, the same pro-Russia Ukrainian political party that Paul Manafort has been charged with being a foreign agent for, uh, for his trial that's due to start in a couple of weeks. Both Sam Patton today and, and Paul Manafort and his trial in a couple of weeks, they're both charged with being unregistered foreign agents for something called the opposition block, which is what forms 
in Ukraine after Manafort's pro-Russia client Viktor Yanukovych, the dictator in Ukraine, was deposed and chased back to, back to Moscow in a popular uprising. They remade Yanukovych's party as this group Opposition Bloc. So that's one link to the, the Manafort case. Both Sam Patton today and Paul Manafort are charged with the same crime, and they're charged with committing the same crime on behalf of the same foreign entity. Also, Paul Manafort has a co-defendant in his next trial, the trial that's due to start in Washington, D.C. in a couple weeks. Uh, his co-defendant is not likely to turn up in the courtroom, though. His name is Konstantin Kalimnik. He's Russian-born. He's described by the FBI as having active links to Russian intelligence agencies. Konstantin Kalimnik worked for years at Paul Manafort's firm, and he is charged alongside Manafort in some of the felony charges that Manafort will be facing in a couple of weeks. But in addition to his work with Paul Manafort, this guy Konstantin Kalimnik also formed a company with, a consulting firm with, Sam Patton, the guy who was charged today. So that's another link between these two cases. And here's another link. Um, the the pro-Russian politician, the Ukrainian leader who Paul Manafort worked for and helped get elected in Ukraine, as I mentioned, that was Viktor Yanukovych. Um, there's no mention of Viktor Yanukovych in the charging documents today related to Sam Patton. But Sam Patton, according to prosecutors, was placing op-eds in U.S. media outlets and was organizing political meetings on Capitol Hill. The, the, the guy for whom Sam Patton was illegally lobbying without registering as a foreign agent, it wasn't Viktor Yanukovych, but it was Viktor Yanukovych's chief of staff. So Paul Manafort is charged with being an unregistered foreign agent for Viktor Yanukovych and his party. Sam Patton is charged with being an unregistered foreign agent for Viktor Yanukovych's party and Viktor Yanukovych's chief of staff. The unnamed foreign official who's designed, described throughout the charging documents for Patton today, all indications are that he was uh, this guy, Sergei Lavachkin, part of opposition bloc, chief of staff to Yanukovych. He's all over the Sam Patton charging documents today if he is, in fact, the unnamed foreign official who's described in these documents. It should also be noted that in the evidence that was introduced in the last Paul Manafort trial, that same guy, Sergei Lavochkin, is described as basically being the main paymaster for Paul Manafort for all the work he did in Ukraine. More than $40 million of the overseas payments that prosecutors say were funneled to Paul Manafort over the years came from this guy, Sergei Lavochkin, who has a starring role in today's new indictment as well. Now, so lots of links to Manafort, right? You may have heard today that when they charged this guy Sam Patton today and they got his guilty plea and he signed off in this cooperation deal, you may have heard today that prosecutors also claimed in his case that Patton illegally funneled foreign money into the Trump inauguration. It's a $50,000 illegal donation that prosecutors described today. This $50,000 in illegal foreign money that was funneled into the Trump inauguration, according to these charging documents today, that money, according to prosecutors, also came from this same Ukrainian guy who plays such a big role in the Manafort case, Sergei Lavochkin. So there's lots and lots of ties today between this guy's new case today and Manafort's case, which is still ongoing. Right? Still ongoing because he's got another second federal trial coming up in a couple of weeks. But on that specific claim by prosecutors today about the Trump inauguration, that is fascinating for a whole bunch of reasons. I mean, for one, bluntly, this is the first time that prosecutors have directly alleged that foreign money was funneled into any Trump campaign entity. Also, the mechanism by which it was done is interesting. According to the statement of offense today in this Sam Patton case, Sam Patton convinced some American person, we don't know who it was, um, to write a check um, that was a $50,000 check that was basically supposed to look like an American $50,000 donation to the Trump inauguration. That $50,000 donation obtained four tickets to Trump inaugural events. Well, that American person, whoever it was, that person who wrote the check in their own name, that person then got reimbursed that $50,000 from Sam Patton and his company. Then Sam Patton and his company got reimbursed by the Ukrainian oligarch guy, Yanukovych's chief of staff. He wired Sam Patton $50,000 to cover the expense out of an offshore bank account that he controlled in Cyprus. So that's, that's the mechanism is interesting, right? It's money coming from abroad that Sam Patton is passing through his company in Washington through to some other American citizen who donates the money to Trump. 
It's foreign money, but it has to go through that little route in order to get to the Trump inaugural campaign. Now, I'm interested in every part of that, <laughs> including who was the unnamed American who wrote the check? Did that person do this wittingly? How did prosecutors find out about all of this? Do prosecutors believe this might have happened in other circumstances when it comes to the Trump inauguration? I mean, part of the reason this is such an interesting part of the charge today from prosecutors is because from the very beginning, the Trump inaugural committee has looked like a giant slush fund. <laughs> We've been reporting on this for like a, a year, more than a year. There's been, it, something is rotten in Denmark when it comes to the presidential inaugural committee, and we have been able to see it for a very long time. We're going to have more on that coming up in the show tonight. It's just been clear for almost since the inauguration happened that there was something very wrong with the math around the inauguration, the math and the money. They raised way, way, way more money than they could have spent on that inauguration that they actually had. They never accounted for what happened to the money. Like I said, we will get to more of that later on this hour. But, but seeing these first allegations from prosecutors about the inaugural committee today is something I've sort of been waiting for. It also sort of helps us out with the timing about what's happened with this new defendant and this new guilty plea and this new cooperator. In the plea agreement that prosecutors entered with the court today, they say that Sam Patton first came forward with a proffer, uh, with his formal offer of information to prosecutors on May 22nd of this year. Now, what caused Sam Patton to come forward to prosecutors on May 22nd? We don't know exactly, but it may be helpful to note that just before that, about a week and a half before that, ABC News published this great and super important investigative piece about the Trump inauguration, about the possibility of foreign money coming into the Trump inauguration. You see the headline there, exclusive special counsel probing donations with foreign connections to Trump inauguration. ABC News broke that really important story May 11th of this year. We now know, according to this charging document and prosecutors today, that less than two weeks later, less than two weeks after that piece was published by ABC News, prosecutors had locked down a formal written proffer of information and cooperation from this guy who we now know is a cooperating witness and, a new, and the newest guilty plea. Now that we know he first started cooperating on May 22nd, um, <laughs> that also tells us that, uh, hey, the Mueller investigation had an active cooperating witness working with them for more than the past three months, and none of us had any idea about it. Mueller side of this doesn't leak. If, if you are hoping to get juicy leaks out of the special counsel's office, nobody's getting any leaks out of the special counsel's office. Otherwise, we would have heard that Sam Patton was a cooperator and was due to be charged someday. Prosecutors also say in the charging documents today that Sam Patton lied to and obstructed the Senate Intelligence Committee in their Senate investigation of the Russia scandal. We hadn't even known that Sam Patton had testified to the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, the chairman and vice chairman of that committee, Senator Richard Burr and Senator Mark Warner, put out a statement soon after Sam Patton was charged today confirming that Mr. Patton did, in fact, speak to the committee earlier this year. They also said in their statement that something about Patton's testimony to the committee caused them to notify the Justice Department that he should be subject to a criminal referral. Uh, that's also new news. We didn't know that before today. But did that criminal referral from Burr and Warner about Sam Patton, did that lead to this action by prosecutors today against Sam Patton? It kind of doesn't seem like it. It's, it's interesting. Look at the actual language from the statement that Burr and Warner put out today. This is what they said, quote, we can confirm that Mr. Patton produced documents to the committee and was interviewed by committee staff. Due to concerns about certain statements made by Mr. Patton, the committee made a criminal referral to the Department of Justice. While the charge and resultant plea today do not appear to directly involve our referral, we appreciate their review of this matter. So this is fuzzy in an, in an interesting way. Sam Patton testifies to the Senate Intelligence Committee. Something about that testimony causes the Senate Intelligence Committee to refer him to the Justice Department for prosecution. He has now, as of today, been prosecuted. But it's not clear if the Justice Department actually prosecuted him for the thing that he was referred about. We don't know if what upset the Intelligence Committee so much is what the Justice Department charged him with. It kind of seems like maybe it wasn't. We've been trying to figure out that how those things connect all day. The, the Intelligence Committee has been no commenting us all day ever since they issued that statement and we've been trying to figure it out. So that remains unclear in an interesting way. 
But in a bigger, bigger picture here, if there are now going to be Department of Justice prosecutions against people for lying to Congress, for lying to congressional committees investigating the Russia scandal, well, that's a very interesting turn in this case altogether. I mean, members of Congress have made strong and in some cases angry charges that they've been lied to by a whole bunch of different witnesses associated with the president and the administration and the campaign in Russia-related testimony. Everybody from Eric Prince to Roger Stone to Jared Kushner to Donald Trump Jr., I mean, if there are now going to be prosecutions against witnesses for lying to Congress on this subject, where do we start? So we'll have more on that coming up tonight as well. Uh, if you know anybody who has testified to Congress on this subject, if they seem a little more nervous today than they did before today, uh, this Sam Patton guilty plea today and the statement of offense that prosecutors released about him where they nail him for lying to Congress, that's probably why your pal is nervous today. Um, on this guy, Sam Patton pleading guilty and agreeing to, to cooperate, I, I mentioned before that he wasn't really on anyone's radar in terms of the Mueller investigation and the Russia scandal writ large before he turned up in court today. I, I say that's, that's true in general. There are a few important exceptions to that, though. This spring, a couple of eagle-eyed journalists actually did interesting interviews with and, and profiles of Sam Patton, particularly focused on his relationship with Konstantin Kalimnik and, and Sam Patton's role in the Manafort-ish former Soviet political universe that's started to come into focus in this investigation when Manafort first got in trouble. Natasha Bertrand from The Atlantic was one of those journalists who interviewed Sam Patton this spring. Her profile of him was not just about Patton's relationship with Konstantin Kalimnik and, and Patton's work in the former Soviet Union. She also wrote about his work with Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica is the data firm that was paid millions of dollars by the Trump for President campaign. Cambridge Analytica has since fallen on hard times. They shut down in May after a serious controversy in which it was revealed they'd stolen personal information off of Facebook from tens of millions of people without their permission. Part of that scandal was the apparent link of some of that data theft to an academic with ties to the Russian government. And there were other unexplained Russia-related interests and ties for, between Cambridge Analytica and, and its parent company. A whistleblower named Christopher Wiley was the main engine behind that scandal that ultimately shut down Cambridge Analytica earlier this year. One of the things that he raised alarms about this spring was Cambridge Analytica, as early as 2014 and 2015, for some reason, testing U.S. audiences on messaging related to Russia and Vladimir Putin. Some of the message testing that Cambridge Analytica did, even in 2014, so well before uh, the 2016 uh, presidential election involved testing opinions on Vladimir Putin, testing opinions on uh, Russian expansionism in Eastern Europe. Vladimir Putin was the only foreign leader that this company tested. As, as far as you know. As, well, as, at least when I was there, that, that, what he, that, that was true during the extent that I was there. It was, he was the only foreign leader that, 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 that we had tested at the, at, at the time that I was there. And for me, that's concerning. Why was Cambridge Analytica in 2014 testing American audiences on their views on Russia and Vladimir Putin. Sam Patton worked at Cambridge Analytica in 2014, 2015. He became a cooperating witness and pled guilty today. And today, after Sam Patton appeared in federal court in Washington for his arraignment and to plead guilty, Christopher Wiley, that whistleblower, uh, said this on Twitter, quote, breaking, ex-Cambridge Analytica contractor Sam Patton just charged by FBI after Mueller referral. This guy was responsible for Cambridge Analytica operations in the U.S. that involved covertly testing U.S. voter attitudes on Putin's leadership. Quote, I know there's more to come. All right, so bottom line here. Thank you for watching the news on Friday night before a holiday weekend. It's so worth it, right? <laughs> Special counsel has a new cooperating witness and a new guilty plea. Also, special counsel's investigation is apparently not ending tomorrow. Sorry. Also, this case appears to be linked to the Manafort case, for sure. Also, this is another unregistered foreign agent case for the special counsel's office. Also, for the first time, this case raises the possibility of Justice Department prosecutions for people lying to Congress about the Russia investigation. Oh. Also, for the first time, prosecutors are zeroing in on the Trump inauguration describing illicit foreign funds being funneled into Trump campaign entities for the first time. Tell me more. But to my, to my mind, most intriguingly, I think, 
for the first time, this new case that we just learned of today, this shows the special counsel's office getting close to the Donald Trump campaign data operation, Cambridge Analytica. And in the case of Sam Patton, apparently specifically the unexplained links between that data operation and Russia. And that, of course, is the bottom line of all bottom lines. So hold on, we got more coming up. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.